everybody, I was asked to make a follow-up video to the one that I had made uh, over a month ago that was aimed at how we help our children get through this national emergency. And I'm following up with some ideas for us as adults to get through this emergency. You may have noticed that it is not getting easier as time goes by, and that is because new and different problems and conundrums are presenting themselves to us as time goes by. So I wanted to start by reminding all of us how important it is to give thanks, even when times are hard. And that came to me early on in this process. I believe it was Lent. It might have been right before Lent. But I was really making an effort to recite the Venite, the Venite, every morning. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout with joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before God's presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. And as I was reciting that every morning, it really brought home to me on the days that I was wanting to slip into a little bit of self-pity that we have so much to be thankful for and we're asked to give thanks and it really does make a difference to our mood to do that. Uh, I wanted to talk very briefly about the grief process. We have had so many losses with this national emergency and everybody's losses have been different. Um, for my mom who lives alone, she's lost the connection and the physical touch. For some people, they have lost their their kind of get up and go in terms of getting out and getting to work and contributing. Um, other people have lost loved ones to illness. The list goes on and on. So it's important to remember that the loss process goes through stages and these stages are not going to be linear or easy, but it might help you understand what you're going through. And it definitely applies to the current situation, even if you don't have anybody that you know that's sick. And the stages are denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. And they don't go in a straight line. Just a reminder in case you start to wonder why you're back where you started and it doesn't feel good. Um, and then I just wanted to wrap up with a few ideas about how we take care of our own mental health in these times of chaos and stress. And a few of the ideas that I had were to remember any way that you can be of service. And of course, you can reach out to St. James and find opportunities through St. James. You can be writing letters to senior citizens. Um, I've been sewing. Um, but it is fundamentally good for our hearts and our health to be of service to others. So if you're feeling stuck, that's always a good first place to start. And then of course, connection is so very important. And I noticed pretty early on in this process that complete strangers were reaching out to make more connection and we just crave it. Uh, I would be walking at the park and somebody I didn't know would really wanna stop and talk and keep that going, that's important and it can be anybody but and even if you're standing six feet away from somebody that moment of having a conversation with them and that connection is really good for your mental health and then just to wrap up just a reminder for all of us that it's easy to get stuck in the rabbit hole of why is this happening and it's much more productive to try to focus on how am i going to cope so if you find yourself really spinning your wheels about why this is happening, why this, why that, really try to refocus yourself on the idea of how you are going to move forward. If you are just really stuck and you can't find anything to be thankful for or you're feeling depressed or you're feeling weepy for days on end, please, please, please reach out to someone in the church office. There's so many good people there that would be delighted to help you. It's nothing to be embarrassed about. That's why we're here together. That's why we're a community. So um, please reach out if you need somebody. And I look forward to speaking with y'all again soon.